Dear students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today, in the Living World Part One, we are going to talk about the introduction to the living world, diversity in the living world, need for classification, taxonomy and biosystematics, history of classification, and three domain classification. All living forms coexist with each other. There are about 8.7 million species of organisms that have been estimated to exist on Earth. A study reports that 86% of all species on the land and 91% of those in the seas are yet to be discovered, described and catalogued. Though humans are placed in the topmost position on the hierarchy, they have to depend on plants and animals for food. Animals are also used as source of labor in farming as pets and for other economic benefits. Understanding animals and their unique characteristics, habitats, behavior and evolutionary relationships is very important. Here we will deal with diversity in the living world, need for classification, types of classification, taxonomical hierarchy, nomenclature and tools for studying taxonomy. Now let us move on to the diversity in the living world. Earth has numerous habitats with a wide range of living organisms inhabiting them. Plants and animals are present in almost all places, from polar ice caps to the volcanic hot springs, from shallow lagoons to the deepest oceans, from tropical rainforests to dry and parched deserts. There are a variety of species that have been adapted successfully to live in diverse ecosystems. Ecosystem is a community of biotic and abiotic factors and their interrelationships. The term ecosystem was coined by Arthur George Tansley in 1935, whose image is given below on the left side. The presence of a large number of species in a particular ecosystem is called biological diversity or in short biodiversity. The term biodiversity was first introduced by Walter Rosen in 1985 whose image is given below in the middle and defined by Edward Osborne Wilson whose image is given below on the right side. What are the characteristic features of living organisms? Living organisms show a variety of unique characters different from non-living matter. The key characters of living organisms are cellular organization, nutrition, respiration, metabolism, growth, response to stimuli, movement, reproduction, excretion, adaptation and homeostasis. In this chart, we can see how the different aspects of the living organisms have been explained. Movement is a change in position or place of an organism or a part of an organism. Respiration is a breakdown of food in the cells that helps in the release of energy. Sensitivity is a sense or response to the changes in the environment. This is also called stimuli. Growth is an increase in the size and mass of an organism, increasing cell number and or cell size. Reproduction produces offsprings that prevents extinction of species. Excretion is the removal of the toxic material, waste products of metabolism, substances in excess by chemical reactions in the cells like respiration, etc. Nutrition, where the organisms take in and absorb and assimilate the nutrients, the organic substances, the mineral ions containing raw materials and energy is released from these for growth and tissue repair. Plants make their own food by a process called photosynthesis, where water and carbon dioxide are utilized in the presence of light for the formation of starch. Numerous scientists and taxonomists have made tremendous contribution and documentation the observation and study of even minute characters in living organisms. Their keen observations have led to the classification of living organisms and the study of their interrelationships. Now let us move on to the need for classification. We come across many places where things are arranged in specific categories. In supermarkets, the shelves can have rows and columns of groceries, cosmetics, toys, stationeries, snacks and utensils. If it is not arranged in a well-organized manner, customers and salespersons will waste a lot of time in finding an item. In the same way, libraries also organize the books alphabetically 
or generous voice into autobiographies, novels, kids stories, science fictions, etc. Likewise, it is nearly impossible to study all the living organisms. Hence, it becomes necessary to devise some means and methods to make this possible. And this process is called classification. Classification is a process by which things are grouped in convenient categories based on easily observable characters. The scientific term used for these categories is taxa. Taxon is singular. Taxa is plural. Taxa indicates categories at different levels. For example, kingdom animalia includes multicellular organisms such as reptiles, mammals, etc. Based on their characteristics, all living organisms can be classified into different taxa. This science of classification is called taxonomy. On the right side, you can see the different taxa where the life is classified into different domains. The domains into kingdom, kingdom into phylum, phylum into class, class into order, order into family, family into genus, and genus into lastly the species. Different types of human beings here you can see where he belongs to the kingdom animals. That means organisms able to move on their own. Also belongs to the phylum chordates, animals with a backbone. They also belong to the mammals, class 3, where the chordates with fur or hair and milk glands are classified. The order is primates, the mammals with collar bones and grasping fingers. And the family hominids were the primates with relatively flat faces and three-dimensional vision. They belong to the genus Homo, hominids with upright posture and large brains. And they belong to the species, lastly the Homo sapiens which are the members of the genus Homo with a high forehead and thin skull bones. External and internal structures along with developmental processes and ecological information of organisms are essential as they form basis of the taxonomical studies. Hence, characterization, identification, nomenclature and classification are the scientific stages that are basic to taxonomy. The basic need for classification are to identify and differentiate closely related species, to know the variation among the species, to understand the evolution of the species, to create a phylogenetic tree among the different groups, to conveniently study living organisms. Now let us move on to taxonomy and systematics. Taxonomy, the word is derived from the Greek word. Taxis means arrangement. Nomos means law. Taxonomy is the science of arrangement of living organisms along with classification, description, identification and naming of organisms which includes all the flora and fauna including microorganisms of the world. The word taxonomy was coined by Augustine Pyramus de Candole in 1813 whose image is given on the right side above. Taxonomy is a theoretical study of classification with well-defined principles, rules and procedures. Aristotle is called the father of classical taxonomy and Carolus Linnaeus is the father of modern taxonomy. The image of Aristotle is given on the right side below. Carolus Linnaeus is the father of modern taxonomy which is the system of classifying and naming organisms. One of his contributions was the development of hierarchical system of classification of nature. Today this system includes eight taxa, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. Now what is systematics? It's also a Greek word. System means sequence. The objectives of taxonomy and systematics are very similar. Their goal is to classify organisms with stipulated rules. The main criteria of systematics is identifying, describing, naming, arranging, preserving and documenting the organisms. Apart from the above set features, evolutionary history of the species and the environmental adaptations and interrelationship between species are also being investigated in systematics. Here you can see that the systematics specimen has to be described in the form of taxonomy and it has to be classified where there is a specific arrangement and it has to be named called nomenclature. And the morphology has to be described where the terminology of different parts have to be considered. What are the differences between taxonomy and systematics? 
taxonomy is the discipline of classifying organisms into different taxa. Whereas systematic is a broad field of biology that studies the diversification of species. Taxonomy governs the practices of naming, describing, identifying and specimen preservation. Whereas systematics governs the evolutionary history and phylogenetic relationship in addition to taxonomy. Classification and nomenclature is equal to taxonomy. Taxonomy plus phylogeny is equal to systematics. Now let us move on to the history of classification. Early classification of organisms were based on only two criteria, beneficial or harmful animals. An ancient classification system recognized five animal groups, domestic, wild, creeping, flying and sea animals. Initially, the classification was based on organism's fundamental characteristics such as habitat and morphology only. Aristotle between 384 to 322 BC was the first to classify all animals in his history of animals called Historia Animalium in Latin. He attempted a basic classification of all living organisms into plants and animals. Animals were classified based on locomotion, walking particularly on the land, terrestrial, flying like aerial organisms and swimming aquatic organisms. Based on the presence or absence of red blood, he also classified the animals into two types as anima with blood and those without blood called anima. Aristotle's classification system had limitations and many organisms were not fitting into his classification. For example, the tadpoles of the frogs are born in water and they have gills but when they metamorphose into adult frogs, they develop lungs and can live both in water as well as on land. So how to classify the frogs and where to place them? You can see in the image, the tadpoles, the young ones of the frogs are water breathers because they have gills. As they grow and metamorphose, they form an adult frog and the breathing is through the lungs and the skin. Aristotle classified organisms based on locomotion. Hence birds, bats, flying insects were grouped together just by observing one single characteristic feature of flying ability. On the contrary to the above said example, the ostrich, emu, penguin and southern cassowary are all birds but they cannot fly. So Aristotle would not have classified them as birds. In spite of these limitations, Aristotle's classification system was followed for more than 2000 years up to 1700. After Aristotle, his student Theophrastus, whose image is given on the right side, between 372 to 287 BC, continued his research on the classification of plants and he was known as the father of botany. There was a huge gap till 16th century, then the English naturalist John Ray, 1627 to 1705, whose image is given on the right side, wrote several important works through his life. His most important contribution was the establishment of species as the ultimate unit of taxonomy. In 1682, he published the Methodus Plantarum Nova, which contained about 18,000 plant species, a result of a relatively narrow species concept. His complicated classification was based on many combined characters as opposed to earlier taxonomists. John Ray also aimed at publishing a complete system of nature which included works on mammals, reptiles, birds, fishes and insects. The Swedish biologist Carolus Linnaeus from 1707 to 1788, who is called the father of modern taxonomy and founder of modern systematics, developed a scientific system of taxonomy and binomial nomenclature, which is still with modifications in use. Aristotle to Linnaeus employed easily observable single to few traits for classification of organisms. With increased knowledge for the several biological domains, many characters were considered for classifying organisms. This represented the phase of classical taxonomy, which was based on overall similarities or affinities derived from morphology, anatomy and embryology of organisms. A modification of this system is the numerical taxonomy which evolved in 1950s. This system evaluates the resemblances and differences through statistical methods followed by computer analysis to establish the numerical degree to relationship 
among individuals. Later on, biologists initiated studies on the evolutionary and genetic relationships among organisms, which led to the emergence of phylogenetic classification or cladistics. It is an evolutionary classification based on how a common ancestry was shared. Cladistic classification summarizes the genetic differences between all species in the phylogenetic tree. Ernest Haeckel, whose image is given on the right side, introduced the method of representing evolutionary relationships with the help of a tree diagram called a cladogram. This system of classification takes into account ancestral characters, traits of basic body design which would be in the entire group and derived characters, traits whose structure and functions differs from those of the ancestral characters. One or more derived characters which appeared during evolution result in the formation of new subspecies. In a cladogram, each evolutionary step produces a branching and all the members of the branch would possess the derived character which will not be seen in organisms below the particular branch point. Arranging organisms on the basis of their similar or derived characters which differ from the ancestral characters produced a phylogenetic tree or cladogram. Here you can see an example of a cladogram. All are vertebrates. The sharks, the ray fin fish uh, have a bony skeleton. The four limbs organisms like the amphibians and beyond and the organisms which are producing amniotic egg like the crocodiles, the animals that are producing eggs with shells like the birds, animals that have hairs like the rodents and rabbits and beyond that are the primates. Depending on the system of classification, organisms were classified into two or three kingdoms, later into four, five, six and now even seven kingdoms. R.H. Whittaker, 1969, proposed the five kingdom classification. The kingdoms defined by him were Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia based on the cell structure, mode of nutrition, mode of reproduction and phylogenetic relationship. The image of R.H. Whittaker is given on the right side. Here you can see the classification of organisms based on the five kingdom classification by Whittaker. They are classified into prokaryotic organisms like the Monera. The eukaryotic organisms which have the unicellular organisms like the protista. The multicellular organisms with cell wall, they are classified into phototrophic organisms like the plantae. The heterotrophic organisms like the fungi. And the multicellular organisms without cell wall, which have only the cell membrane and classified as animalia. This table gives a comparative account of the different characteristics of the five kingdoms. Let us see one by one. Monera, it's a prokaryotic cell type. The cell wall is non-cellular structure. The body organization is cellular. The mode of nutrition is autotrophic or heterotrophic. The protista, the cell type is eukaryotic. The cell wall is present in some and the body organization is cellular and the mode of nutrition is autotrophic or heterotrophic. Fungi, the cell type is eukaryotic. The cell wall is present. Body organization is multicellular or tissue organization and they are heterotrophic. Plantae, they are eukaryotic cell type. The cell wall is present. The body organization is classified into tissues or organs and they are autotrophic. Animalia, the cell type is eukaryotic. The cell wall is absent. The body organization is made up of tissues, organs or organ systems. Mode of nutrition, they are usually heterotrophic. Now let us move on to the three domain of life. Classification has come a long way and now takes into an account even molecular level DNA and RNA identification. The advancement in molecular techniques and biochemical assays has led to a new classification, the three domain classification. Three domain classification was proposed by Carl Richard Oos in 1977, whose image is given on the right side, and his co-workers. They classified organisms based on the difference in 16 years ribosomal RNA genes. The three domain system as the taxon domain higher than the kingdom. This system emphasizes the separation of prokaryotes into two domains, bacteria and archaea and all eukaryotes are placed into the domain eukarya. Archaea appears to have 
more in common with the eukarya than the bacteria. Archaea differ from bacteria in the cell wall composition and differs from bacteria and eukaryotes in the membrane composition and ribosomal RNA types. Below you can see the classification of the three domains given by Carl Ose in 1977. The archaea, they are extremophiles like the methanogens, halophiles and thermoacidophiles. The middle is the bacteria which include the cyanobacteria, eubacteria, beneficial and pathogenic organisms. The right side you can see the eukarya, the eukaryotes which include the protista, fungi, plants and animals. Now let us see the domain archaea. This domain includes single celled organisms. The prokaryotes which have the ability to grow in extreme conditions like the volcano vents, hot springs and polar ice caps. Hence are called extremophiles. They are capable of synthesizing their food without sunlight and oxygen by utilizing hydrogen sulfide H2S yes, and other chemicals from the volcanic vents. Some of them produce methane, they are called methanogens. Few live in salty environments called halophiles and are thermoacidophiles which thrive in acidic environments and at high temperatures and harmful pathogenic bacteria which are diversely populated. Below you can see the RK classification. On the left side is the Kren archaeota which includes the thermophiles, mesophiles and psychrophiles. In the middle is the Uri archaeota which includes the methanogens and the halophiles. The right side you can see Cor archaeota. Thermus aquaticus is a bacterium which can tolerate high temperatures. The first DNA polymerase enzyme was isolated from Thermus aquaticus. It is used in PCR, polymerase chain reaction for DNA amplification. The image of Thermus aquaticus is given on the right side above. The importance lies in the polymerase chain reaction, PCR. Tagged polymerase isolated from Thermus aquaticus, thermophilic bacterium which is found in the hot springs and the hydrothermal vents. The hydrothermal vents and the hot spring image is given on the right side below. Displays high thermostability between 50 to 80 degrees centigrade. Can withstand high temperature constraints of PCR. They undergo denaturation of helical DNA between 94 to 96 degrees centigrade. Annealing can be done at 68 degrees centigrade. Elongation can be done at around 72 degrees centigrade. Now domain bacteria. Bacteria are prokaryotic. Their cells have no definite nucleus and DNA exists as a circle of chromosomes and do not have histones associated with it. They do not possess membrane bound organelles except for ribosome 70S type. The cell wall contains peptidoglycans. Asexual reproduction occurs through binary fission. Here you can see the image of a well developed bacteria. It has a bacterial flagellum. It has a capsule. Inner to the capsule is a cell wall and inside is a cell membrane or the plasma membrane. Inside the plasma membrane is a cytoplasm which has few ribosomes, plasmids. Outside the cell wall are small structures emerging called the pili. The nucleus is absent. Instead of the nucleus, the circular DNA is placed in the center and that location is called nucleoid. They are rod shaped spears spirals. They are gram positive or gram negative. Many are decomposers such Bacteria are called heterotrophs and some are photosynthesizers. They are called photoautotrophs. Some prepare food from organic and inorganic chemical substances. They are called chemoautotrophs and few cause diseases. They are called pathogenic. There are beneficial organisms which are probiotic bacteria and harmful pathogenic bacteria which are diversely populated. Now cyanobacteria are photosynthetic blue green algae which produce oxygen. These have played a very important key role in the changes of atmospheric oxygen levels from anaerobic to aerobic during the early geologic periods. In the image you can see the cyanobacteria has utilized a lot of water and carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight and prepares a lot of food. During this process it has evolved a lot amount of oxygen in the early geologic periods. Now domain eukarya otherwise called eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are animals which have true nucleus and membrane bound organelles. DNA in the nucleus is arranged as a linear chromosome with histone proteins. 
ribosomes of 80s type in the cytosol and 70s type in the chloroplast and mitochondria. Organisms in this domain are classified under kingdoms namely protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. Here you can see the image of a eukaryotic cell. It has a plasma membrane. Inside the plasma membrane is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm contains organelles like the Golgi apparatus, food vacuoles, mitochondria, peroxisomes, endoplasmic reticulum which is rough because of the presence of ribosomes or smooth because of the absence of the ribosomes, microfilaments, lysosomes, microtubules, intermediate filaments, ribosomes are present. The nucleus is present which has a definite nuclear membrane. Inside the nuclear envelope is the nucleoplasm which has the chromatin network with the histone proteins. In the nucleus is a darkly staining body called the nucleolus. In 1987, Cavalier Smith, whose image is given on the right side, revised the six kingdom classification system to seven kingdom system. The concept of super kingdom was introduced and revised to seven kingdom classification. The classification is divided into two super kingdoms, prokaryota and eukaryota. And seven kingdoms, two prokaryotic kingdoms, which are eubacteria and archaebacteria. And five eukaryotic kingdoms, like the protozoa, chromista, fungi, plantae and animalia. Here you can see in this image, the different types of classifications has been summarized. The three domain system where it is RK, bacteria and eukarya. The five kingdom classification proposed by Whitaker where it has Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia. The six kingdom system which has the bacteria, RK, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. The seven kingdom system where it has the eubacteria, archaebacteria, protozoa, chromista, fungi, plantae and animalia. So today in the living world part 1 we discussed about the introduction to the living world, diversity in the living world, need for classification, taxonomy and biosystematics, history of classification and three domain classification. So thank you, kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to the channel Read Med Prep Academy. Kindly register for UG and PG NEET type MCQs in our website www.readmedprepacademy.com. Our Facebook ID is Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com. Our Instagram is Read Med Prep Academy. To join Read Med Prep Academy, WhatsApp the number given below. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We will reply with appropriate answers. So thank you very much.